Welcome to this video, which is talking about the strategic position. In section three of unit A, we are talking particularly about the external environment. We're talking about what goes on in the outside world that might affect an organization. And we are going to look in particular in this video at Porter's five forces. So first of all, we'll have an overview of what the external environment means and then we'll go quickly through each of the individual five forces. So overview. One of the things in the exam that we are asked to do is analyze the position of a company, strategic analysis, strategic position. One of the most important things is, is there any competition? If there is, is it making it harder for us to make profits or is it still relatively easy for us to make profits? Now, this can be used with alongside your financial analysis. So we might be given a set of numbers, maybe for the last five years, some kind of um, income statement. And we perhaps notice that profits are going down or margins are going down. And we would have to explain why. Well, competitive forces might explain why. So if things are getting more competitive, and I'll talk about what that means in a few minutes. First of all, it might make it difficult to continue making high profits. We may well see that the profit margin has already come down or we may be able to work out it is going to come down in the future. So at the moment it's OK, but it's going to start getting worse. Now, under those conditions, would it be a wise idea for us to look at other industries to operate in? The market we're in, it's going to get harder and harder and harder to make money. Should we look at a different industry or perhaps should we look at a different country? When you have a look at somebody called Ansof, you will come across the idea of product development, different industry, market development, different country. So we need to analyse the position and say, is it going to get worse or is it already getting worse? Has it been getting worse for a while? Now, Porter says there are five different threats, in effect. There are five different areas which might cause you problems. They always cause you problems. But what Porter is interested in is how significant they are. So each of these things may cause your profit margins to go down, may cause you to sell less items. What Porter is interested in is, is it something you need to lay awake at night worrying about? So the threat is very big. Or is it something where you say, I, I know it could happen, but it's not very likely. And you roll over and go back to sleep. The first of these five forces is the threat from new competitors. If there is somebody new who comes into your market, they will take your customers because otherwise they won't have any customers over at. So they can take your customers. How can you keep your customers? Well, one thing that a new entrant almost always does is charge low prices. So in order to keep your customers, you're probably going to have to match their prices. So prices will go down. Because they're new, they will also often spend money on things like advertising, marketing. Well, you will have to match that. So the big problem with a new entrant is you sell fewer items. The items you sell, you get a lower price for and you have to increase your costs, all of which means your profits are going to go down. So what Porter is interested in is, is that likely or unlikely to happen? Now, what Porter refers to are what are called barriers to entry. Barriers to entry are what keep other people out. If the barriers to entry are high, we do not have to worry about competitors coming in. It's going to be difficult for them. Barriers to entry are low, then we have to lay awake at night every single night worrying who else is going to come into this industry. Now, there are lots of very specific examples of barriers to entry, but mainly it's common sense. Imagine I wanted to start up a supermarket. Well, there was a big barrier to entry. It's very expensive. So don't get too bogged down with what are the specific barriers to entry. Just use your common sense. 
The next one that we have, what about the existing competitors that we have? So we have to worry about new people coming in, but we also have to worry about people who are already there. If there are a lot of competitors, then obviously that affects how much money we're going to make, particularly if the market is mature. A mature market is one that isn't growing very much. Now, if a market is growing very rapidly and I have a company, well, I can grow just simply because there's more customers all around. I could double in size every six months simply because there's more and more and more customers. Under those circumstances, there is very little rivalry. Every company is so busy just signing up new customers, they don't have time to worry about what anybody else is doing. But when the market turns mature, it means there aren't really any new customers. There will be some, but there aren't going to be nearly as many as they were. Now, under those circumstances, how does a company grow and get more customers? Well, the only way is to start taking them off of their rivals. So in the past, they could just grow and grow and grow. Now, the only way to grow is to take customers from somebody else. So there will be more rivalry. Customers. We would like to make lots of profits as a company. One way to make lots of profits as a company is to raise your prices. Now, that's what all companies would like to do. The trouble is customers don't want prices to be put up fairly, obviously. Weak customers will have to put up with it. A weak customer is one who says, I don't want you to put prices up, but the company goes ahead and does it anyway. A weak customer is one we don't really care very much about. Powerful customers, on the other hand, we need to keep them happy. Let's say, for example, that I had a company and 95% of my sales went to one customer. What happens if I try and put prices up? My customer is going to say, your prices are too high. If you don't put them down again, we're going to leave. Now, what am I going to do? 95% of my revenue is coming from one customer. I'm going to put the prices back down again, aren't I? I'm not going to, I cannot afford to annoy that customer. On the other hand, if it was a customer that we only sold half a percent of our revenue to, we had, we had hundreds and hundreds of customers and all fairly small. And one of them said, if you put your prices up, I will leave. I would say, goodbye, close the door on your way out. It's not really going to bother me that much. So we need to look at are our customers powerful, which stops us putting prices up. The flip side of that is suppliers. We also need to think about whether our suppliers are powerful, because if they are, they will put their prices up, the prices that we have to pay. If they are powerful, what do we do? We pay it. We have no choice. If our suppliers are weak, they will put their prices up and we will say, we will go somewhere else. Powerful suppliers, you and I all come across powerful suppliers. They will be people like utility companies, transport companies. In the UK, if they put the prices of the trains up, so if my train fare goes up, what do I do? I pay it. I have no choice. I have no other way of getting to work. So some, cust some companies are powerful suppliers. Often they are powerful if there is not many other places that you can get something from. So a big supermarket might be a powerful supplier to me because there may only be two or three of them and I don't have that much choice. In the exam, the examiner will give you clues as to who the suppliers are, if it supports five forces question, and he will give you clues as to how powerful they are. We don't want powerful suppliers because they will put their prices up. That will put our costs up. The final one of Porter's Five Forces is the threat from substitutes. Now, again, I would like to put my prices up. I would like to reduce the quality of my product so that I lower my costs. Prices up, cost down, profit, profit going up. Brilliant. The trouble is... Substitutes, if there are lots of other products that the customer could buy instead, then what will happen? If I put my prices up, they will say, we could get this from somebody else. If I lower my costs and perhaps reduce the quality, 
customers will say, we can go somewhere else. So lots of substitutes stops you from increasing your margins very much. So in summary, this is a very practical exam topic. You will be given lots of information about how easy it is to enter, what your current rivals are like, what the suppliers are like, what the customers are like, and what the substitutes are like. Or if you're not given them, it's because the examiner expects you to use your common sense and think about them. Now, it's a very important part of the strategic position because if it's easy to get into the industry, we won't make as much profit. Lots of rivalry won't make as much profit. Powerful customers, powerful suppliers won't make as much profit. Lots of substitutes won't make as much profit. We have to know that because it might well be that this industry is not going to make much profit and maybe we should look at doing something else.